How's it going everyone? Zeke here today and I am showing you a tutorial for the game Zombicide. Now keep in mind the game is in beta version 0.939. Uh, there could be some changes down the road, definitely some stuff being added to the game later at a later date. But for now I will show you what's currently in the game and if anything changes I will do some kind of update video. Now first off you want to hit play. Everything here is for all the characters you've made, who they are, what you've called them uh, name-wise, and uh, the faction name, uh, their type, and what level they are. If you notice here, it says Reaver and Healer. That's because this is a hybrid class, which I'll get to later on. Now, for this one, you're going to want to hit New Character, and you have the usual class selection up here. Now, you may be known Hybrid, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So first off, you get the male and the female versions of them. You have your current name. No, wait, this is your clan name. So, my character would name Adler, and my clan is the Leviathan Clan. Really simple. And over here we have special advanced options. Hardcore options. Uh, you die. You die for good. It stays that way. Death is permanent. The character does not have access to a shared stash as well. Unlucky. Let's see. Unlucky character finds rare items. Uh has a lower chance to find them, but you get a boost of 5% XP when you kill enemies. Semi-hardcore, every time you die, uh, you can come back, but you lose 5 vitality. If your base vitality ever hits 0, you're dead. Now, this one is harder. Uh, this one does get hard, as if you do die way too much, you're slowly going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And there's virtually nothing you can do. Except for spend more points into Vitality, which lowers your point total overall. Next one is Poverty. Less money and fewer items, but a 5% bonus when killing uh, enemies. Combine that with Unlucky, and you're going to require shops, which are themselves hard to find. <laughs> That'll rely on the other clans that you meet to hopefully sell you the stuff. Uh, lost means you no longer have a map. Prima Donna. I want to use any items. Okay, you have to use everything above a, uh, a white item. Gray would be like a weak item. White is a normal. And then you got... Yeah, it would be green, blue, and purple. Or is it green, blue, purple, and then orange? Hmm. That would suck if you have to use starting blue only. <laughs> Cursed. All right. You cannot equip any items that are not cursed, and I think you yourself are cursed. Basically, what a cursed item is, um, it lowers all the uh, all the stats needed to use it by 25%. I believe it's 25%, but it also has a negative stat on it, so you need to be careful in that. If you yourself are cursed, I uh, can't remember what it does. Been a while since I've been cursed. I think you just lose a percentage of a certain attribute, if not all. Ego items. With ego, you can only use ego items. Uh, these items do level up, though how often, I do not know, because I always find a better item than the next current ego I have. So they usually only get one level. But with this one, you're restricted to only ego items. Fragile. Oh, half health. You will always have half health, no matter what. Uh, clumsy, half dexterity. Huh. So you die quicker, harder to be harder to dodge things. No, that's straight up dexterity. You may you may the entire stat itself could be reduced. Ooh, I would not want to do that. <laughs> Family means you currently you only have so many followers, and you cannot recruit any more. As they die, your clan gets weaker. And if your clan reaches just you, you have 10 minutes to hire someone else or you lose. So if you lose all your family in this, you might as well just exit the game because you'll never be able to recruit. Actually, that'd probably just be an instant fail. And then loner. You're not able to recruit anyone. You don't even start with anybody. You can purchase guards, however. Uh, and apparently you're not capable of getting a logistics win. Forgot what that win does, but we'll cover that in the next video for the winning type and the losing type. So that's about it on the advanced options. They just make the game harder or tailor it to what you want. Now, the characters. Each of these characters have three total skill trees. Uh, 
I don't remember any of them offhand, but the priest is like a paladin, a healer, and like a shaman. Uh, each one will do something different. Now, if we go to hybrid class, I'll just explain this in a minute. We go over to priest. Yeah, paladin, healer, shaman. These are its entire skill trees. Uh, did you do? If you notice, all up here, these are not skills. These are what is it? Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> It'll hit me soon. But uh, basically, for the mana bonus, uh, increasing your faith it gives you one mana point per point of spirit. Uh, mana regeneration bonus per point of spirit. These, basically, proficiencies. That's it. These are all your proficiencies. Your sword. You can use sword weapons. I can use mace weapons. I can use, I have an attack. I can use leather armor. I go to the healer tree. I can still use mace weapons. But here I can use staff, and I have leather armor again. And as you see, mana bonus, two points per point of spirit. And I believe that does stack with the paladins. For the shaman, I have defense bonus. See, so what is this? I get an extra 0.5 defense per point of dexterity, so I can dodge a little bit better with this class. Again, more mana bonus. So he gets a total of 5 mana per spirit on top of what spirit already gives him, I believe. So spirit is a very good skill sync for this class. Next, you actually have the skills themselves. The first here will always take one point, just to put the first point in. So let's say I want prayer. I would add a point to prayer, and the next time I would actually require two. Every time you sink one point into this, uh, I believe this number goes up by one. I haven't actually gotten too far, but it just seemed to be doing that. Now, second tier, this will change because he's two, four, six, and eight. One, two, four, six, and ten. And one, two, four, and six. Some classes are a bit... Uh, have have something a little different. Some will have five. Someone will jump, like from skip the whole two and go four next. Something like that. Each one has their own little quirks. Now, let's talk about the hybrid class here. You see, it says specialty one and specialty two. What this means is you choose your skill tree. So I would choose. Say I wanted to be kind of like a melee tank class. I would. Pick Defender. All right. What other? Do I want to have spells? Well, I want to be a healer. I want to survive everything. So I go Priest, Healer, select that. So I can hold up to the heaviest armor. I have a lot of defenses. And my skill sets are based on defense and healing. Is that all? Well, no. Remember how I said the Priest has these proficiencies up at top for these different ones? If I choose the, pre, uh, the priest class, I mean the actual priest class, all of these stack, except for like leather armor for leather armor, leather armor, leather armor. I only need one point of that, but it's basically these mana bonuses. But it's also a bit more than that. You see, if I am a defender, I can use shields, I can use leather armor, male armor, but it doesn't look like I can go any higher than that. It's kind of weird. Where's the plate? Oh, right down here. Plate armor. Granted, it takes like 15 skill points just to get one point into that. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 15. That's a jump. <laughs> uh, I also get more vitality by clicking this class. But I lose all the proficiencies from up here. So what weapon types can this get? Sword, mace, and axe. So it can get all the weapon types except for stafe and wand. Oh, and dagger. I forgot about that. Let's see, damage bonus. And I, I get some de decent damage with it. Oh. <laughs> and I wouldn't have to worry too much about mana, just being straight in the middle of the combat, and I would constantly gain mana. So, yeah, that's a little. It's quite nice there. That's all the defenses, all the proficiencies, and all the skills you would get with this class. Now, to go back to the priest healer. I, still, I already have maces. I don't have to worry about them. But I can also use staves if I wish. And I won't be using leather armor. I can start with mail and eventually get plate mail. But my faith bonuses are a lot higher. Mana and mana regen. 
but that's it. Nothing else. So let's go back to the warrior defender. So yes, I do get health bonus. That's all the bonuses to my attributes I get. Oh, except for this one, strength. But it's not too big, but even that's not too big. These bonuses aren't too big in the beginning, but in the end, they do stack up. So when selecting all your classes, you have to take in not just the skills, but the proficiencies here. Uh, you could very well just have like a wizard specializing in ice magic and get like a rogue for some melee damage, but you'll never have anything higher than uh, leather armor, I believe. But at least you can get leather armor, unlike the wizard who cannot get leather armor anywhere. So you got some interesting mix and matches for these. So choose <laughs> Fire Mage Healer. Just rotate your character here. It doesn't really rotate by much. That's the only way to do it, sadly. So that's it on making your current character. Just hit OK. And then you're taken to a next screen. Now this one would probably confuse a lot of people right off the bat. So what is this we're looking at? First off, we see my character level. It says I'm zero. Technically, I'm level one because these things do not go by odds. Here is the enemy levels. They're on normal if I pick zero and hard if I pick four. This starts up. This is basically their level difference with me at the very start. They're at level four. I'm at level one. That's obviously going to be very hard to do. And I can select all the way up to here, but I cannot go up in here. As you notice, this is normal difficulty. This is elite. This is le uh, veteran and this is legendary. If you notice over here, champion, elite, legendary, ultimate. I have not actually unlocked these just yet, so I'm not 100% sure what they do, but I believe they'll just straight up up the difficulty. Normal, champion, which it says expert, veteran, and legendary. Now over here is the pacing of the game. This generally depicts how fast quests go, how often monsters will respawn. The faster it is, uh, you'll have less quests, less time to do quests, and monsters will respawn like crazy, plus you get 20% more experience. And you start with more quests. Do it very slowly. Monsters take a long time to respawn. Quests can go on for damn near forever, but you lose 20% of all XP. And then you just have like 15% bonuses or debuff there, and then the normal pacing. I recommend the normal pacing for a start. Area size. You can random it, or you can go tiny, small, medium, large, and huge. These depict on how many zones there are. Huge, you're obviously going to have a ton of. Whereas tiny, I don't even think you can... You can probably do it with eight clans, but there's probably not going to be too many number of regions. Uh, I do not believe this depicts dungeons at all. So... Even a medium was quite long. Uh, <laughs> my first uh, Let's Play on this game, I believe the area size was medium, and it was taking forever just to find them all. So don't get discouraged if you want to go huge, and anything smaller than that is just too small. Medium is quite large. The number of the clans. These are clans besides you. So if you pick eight, there will be a total of nine if you include yourself. Um... There's more than eight clans in this entire game. There's a ton of different clans. They're all different. They all have different bonuses, uh, different attributes, traits, how they think, how they act, uh, even how their makeup. There isn't a female-only clan in here. <laughs> uh, there's even goblins and demons as clans. So putting them on eight, you'll get to see a lot of the clans. But it's also this is also going to make the game a little bit harder because there are victory conditions where you have to either wipe everyone out, be the last one there, or to be a, a diplomat and get people into an alliance. Not just you with them, but them with each other. So it would have to be an all-around alliance. Like four people, four clans, you included. You're going to be aligned with all four of them. And they're going to have to be aligned with, with each other and you. Uh, there's another one, logistics. I can't remember what that one did. But we'll get into that one again next video. Uh, but also, these are potentially more enemies that can be wiping you out. If they hate you, they often will help another faction destroy you or just destroy you themselves. And they can be quite powerful. These guys level up on their own. 
they do virtually everything you can do. They send their parties out on adventuring. They send them to get food, to get resources for all kinds of stuff. So you're going to have to deal with them. So do you want less or do you want more? It's basically all there is to it. Or none. Huh. Huh, <laughs> huh. I'd have to see a new, uh, I'd have to see that someday. Now, the region, this is basically every random map that you've ever created. You can always go back and revisit it if you like that particular one, or you can select a new region to make a, an entirely new map. Now, under this, we have Zombies Allowed, Low Stress, Raging Hordes, and if Dangerous Monsters. Zombies Allowed. Uh, if you don't, if you have this off... You will never see zombies in this game, period. Kind of odd to never see zombies in a game called Zombicite dealing with zombies. <laughs> but they are a pain in the ass, so if you don't want them on, or you're just tired of zombies, just turn it right off. Low stress. This town will not have some of the more stressful quests, like town attacks. However, you get 15% less experience. Your town can be raided. Uh, not just by the other clans, but by normal monsters. Like a strong monster comes up, gathers a big party, and just launches an attack in your village. Yeah, this will turn that off. It'll also turn like a few things off. Probably something like, hey, there's a disease going around in your camp, or this guy's petrified, go heal him, or whatnot. Now, dangerous monsters, all monsters are more powerful on average, but there's less monsters overall. This could be hard, or this could be easy, depending on what level you are and what level you set them as. If they're the same level as you, and they're harder, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but they also have a chance to drop better items. Raging Hordes. Monsters are running around... The... More monsters are running around than normal, and they are less powerful than normal monsters. Combining both of these, it'd probably just be normal. But basically... Few stronger monsters or more weak monsters. <laughs> Basically, Zerg Rush or Protoss Rush. I don't know. <laughs> and once you get all that done, create new area. And with the loading screen, boom, you're right in the loading. Oh, you're right in the game. Blech, right in the loading. <laughs> okay. You can close this and all the qu all the um, tutorials will come up here as you do something or as you dismiss these. It'll tell you all kinds of stuff, which we'll get into later. If you've already seen them, hide help topics, or you can even get all help. But for now, we are going to hide those. And voila, you are in the game. Hit Alt to turn off anything that you can see here, but be careful because if there are any items on the ground, it will not show them if... You're not displaying anything. Granted, it's a lot less crowded if you do, if you uh, turn it off. Let's see. All right, I do believe that's it for the game setup. I will be starting another tutorial on in-game all this, what all this means, and some of the other buttons like uh, factions, special items, crafting station, health stone, and the pedestals. So, till then, see you guys later.